I went to college in Michigan and then to grad school in Southern California. And then I decided I had this crazy idea at the age of 25 that I was going to run for the state legislature for the Puyallup area. I was going to go back home to Puyallup and run for the legislature. And a lot of people thought I was crazy. I thought that I was, I was the one who thought that I was the craziest. And, but the cool thing about going into politics when you're young and inexperienced is that you don't know what can't be accomplished. And so public service is a great thing. And I really want to challenge those of you who may be inclined to go home and serve in that way or serve in some other great way to do so. And if you do that, you'll find that you aren't alone because our generation is the most civically minded generation since our grandparents. We want to do things. We want to lead. We want to challenge our peers. We want to serve and we want to make a difference. And there's a great need to do that. There are so many challenges that face our world today. And we need to take those challenges head on, whether it's in our communities, whether it's on a global scale. But when I was in college, I didn't quite know how to do that. I didn't quite know how to get started. So what I want to do in the next few minutes is share with you five tips that I've learned in the past several years about how you can become a leader in your community. And the first thing is learn the story of your community. You know, if you can figure out what makes your community special, what makes it unique in all the world, that is a powerful thing. Former Seattle City Councilman Bruce Chapman told me that when he moved out from New York City in the late 60s, the thing that he wanted to do was become an expert on the history of Seattle. And by becoming an expert, nobody could question him when he ran just a few years later for the Seattle City Council and won. And he said, if you can explain to the people around you, your corner of the world, that you'll have a great power and people will look to you for leadership. And for me, it was going home after college and realizing, you know, I didn't really know all that much about the community that I had grown up in, in Puyallup. And I realized there was this last window of opportunity to talk to the World War II generation, that generation that had given so much, sacrificed so much for our country. And so I started to do interviews with veterans, friends and family of people who were killed in the war, and Japanese Americans who were interned in our own Puyallup fairgrounds. And I ended up doing 120 interviews and wrote follow-up articles in the local paper, the Puyallup Herald. And it was one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. But if you can teach people about the place where you live and understand that deeply, that's a great power. The second thing is to become a great listener. If you can listen, if you not only have the reputation for listening, but truly listen, then you will be trusted. When I was running for public office, I decided that there were two things by which I wanted to be known. The first was I wanted to be known for my local roots, and the second was that I wanted to be known for being willing to listen. But I really did want to be willing to listen. So I proved it by going out and going to 13,000 doorsteps, and it was the time of my life. I got to know the geography of my legislative district. I got to know where people lived. I got to know people's ideas. Best of all, I got the input that I was going to need serving as a legislator in Olympia based on what my constituents would be asking of me. And that was such a rich experience. I got bit by two dogs, you know, <laughs> and I got to learn so much about my community. The third thing is join a few nonprofit boards. Don't just do it to put things on your resume, but truly go to invest in an organization. You'll learn the culture of the organization. You'll learn a side of your community that you may not have known be before. You'll meet fellow leaders in your community. And being a young person, you will be highly sought after. Uh, I was talking to a friend, Justin, earlier here, and we were talking about how in the Kiwanis Club in Puyallup, uh, there's a big age gap. And uh, a young person is very valuable coming in because they are desperate for new blood. And Kiwanis and Rotary and, and the Elks Club and uh, the Masonic Lodge, those may not be the models of community organization in the future, but they have been the models. And keeping that continuity is very important. Getting to know the people who are leaders in your community already is very important. My friend uh, Justin, or my, my friend Ryan, who um, uh, leads the Rotary Club in Puyallup, he says he's learned um, that the key to leadership is successful delegation, being able to share the responsibilities of the club. And so getting involved in a nonprofit board, getting involved in a civic club, that's very important. And then uh, the fourth thing is get in the habit of acknowledging people. And that's why I'm so excited about. Daniel Wynn's presentation, he's acknowledging people. Everyday people he meets, people who are struggling, people who are eccentric, people who are interesting in the community. And that just colors our life. It, it makes it much more interesting when we're attentive to the people around us. But it also ennobles them. It helps them to see their place in the world as well. And it, it was discussed earlier, I think that uh, Dr. Uh, 
Eisenberg's presentation earlier. He talked about how everything is about people. Most of the answers to any question you ask, it comes down to people. My grandfather likes to say that people are more important than rules. And, and uh, a former legislator told me when I got elected that relationships are more important than policy. So get in the habit of acknowledging people. A fellow legislator, Kevin Parker from Spokane, I look up to him because every free moment he gets, he has uh, note cards out, is writing notes to people back home, is on the phone talking to people back home uh, just to thank them for what they do. And he told me something also interesting when I was running for public office for the first time. He said, when you're in a community event, compliment your opponent. And I tried to take that and practice that because we live in an age where there's so much incivility and there's so much negativity in politics. And I think our generation is going to be the generation that reclaims civility. We need to be a generation that loves civility in politics, public life. And then finally, friendship is the most powerful force in any endeavor. If you can get together a team, if you can invite people to join things with you, be a cause together, not just in isolation. There are so many forces that draw us into isolation in the age we're living in. But if you can be a team, you can bring friends on board, that is wonderful. And I think often of the example of three state legislators over 50 years ago who were young men in the state legislature from Seattle. They were roommates uh, down in Olympia during the session. And their names were Slade Gorton, Dan Evans, and Joel Pritchard. They stuck together over the years. They helped each other politically. They were friends. Dan Evans went on to become governor and U.S. senator. Slade Gordon went on to become attorney general and U.S. senator. And Joel Pritchard went on to become congressman and lieutenant governor. They stuck together, they kept their team, and they did great things for the state of Washington. Today, we have huge opportunities before us. We've got to stick together. We've got to be a team. The challenges facing our generation are great. At the state policy level, we face environmental challenges. We face higher education challenges. K-12 education challenges, public safety challenges. The list could go on. We need to get all of the best ideas. That's why this program is so exciting. Because the sharing of ideas, which we can do like never before, can be done at this level. So I look forward to meeting you after this. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your service at UW.